I thought I'd show you this thing. Ah, we'll, we'll uh, reset first. Now I'll play it. So it's playing long, and then I'll press X and it will leave the scene to a copy of this scene. And the same music plays. And it does have, because there's a lot of effects and stuff going on it, there's a little bit of a glitchy bit at the, at the start, but then it plays fine. Uh, so uh, I thought I'd show you how to make that. Right, so let's bring in a music track. Nice. Some fat bass going on. Now let's get a, um, a chip. We'll actually turn the volume off for this because we're actually just going to be messing with logic first. Okay, so um, the idea is you have a keyframe that sets the playhead to the end. So if I hold L1 and use X to move the playhead, then it's stored that end position. Um, uh, yeah, now if we use a value slider, we can set where uh, what position that playhead is at in the whole thing because of one it's it's setting it to the end as it's recorded but if you put it half it's only half powering the keyframe so it's only half putting it at the end so it's putting it in the middle you want to keep changes so that when this turns on to whatever degree it goes to that position but then it can just play as normal after this is unpowered and you only want to power this for a split second so that it goes to that position and then the keyframe isn't keeping it at that position and it can just play normally. So uh, for that we need to control um, this value getting through to this power. Uh, and we're going to use a node to do that. So we'll put that through the node and power the keyframe. And we'll just have it as a no port because we're just using it within this microchip. And we'll have it be off for no, for the minute. And um, so now when we play, like nothing happens, it's just playing as normal. And we will time everything using a timeline so that we can get very accurate um, timings for these things yeah so if you zoom in enough using l1 right or left l1 right or left to do that uh, then you see these vertical stripes those vertical stripes are uh, effectively frames so you can see as the playhead goes on it's highlighting the next frame and that will be what will be activated during that that frame in the while well, the timeline is playing so now I add a keyframe on here that turns this on and this keyframe just lasts for one frame now if you put it on the first frame then it kind of um, because this hasn't started playing yet it kind of messes up so then you put it on the second frame so that it starts playing for a frame and then skips to the right position and then resumes playing from there but then it, th that keyframe only lasts for this period of time this tiny frame and then you go to the next frame and it's that's not powered anymore which is what we want so let's try that so it's kind of skipped it to the right position and if we change that to like 0.8 now it's at 80% of the uh, timeline so that's cool um, now we want to actually not just use a value slider but we want to use a variable so that we can remember um, where we got to in the in the music track and kind of get it back to that position afterwards so let's call this music progress 
So we called it Music Progress. Uh, this doesn't need to be all that, so let's just put that to zero. And that to one. Starts at zero, and then we use this current value here. Um, so now if we just test that, we've got that to 0 0.5, it'll get to that uh, middle point again, which is cool. Um, and now we want to have a variable modifier looking at that same uh, variable name and we want to set it using the music tracks um, playhead position which is uh, the percentage through the track that it is so that's cool so if we play time uh, we can see yeah setting it to 0 0.5 there because it's 0.5 of the way through if we put it further on it's getting 70% uh, and so on so it's reflecting how far through the playhead through the uh, track you are um, but as you saw if I leave this powered uh, then it's constantly already setting it to some value and it starts off at the beginning of the track so it's overwriting it immediately so what we want to do is get the position we already had uh, then on the second frame get this uh, to the right position there or whatever and then once it's there on the frame after we'll allow it to start storing the pos position as time goes on so now we'll have a keyframe on here and that will power this on so normally it's off oh normally it's off but then when you get to here that keyframe will become on and turn on the uh, variable modifier and we'll make that keep changes so that when it gets over here it will still be powered um, up instead of just being powered for that frame and then turning off again uh, we also want to make this uh, continuously um, setting the value so that it, it's always up to date when the player leaves the um, scene so now if we do that it's playing from the correct time and it's uh, still saying the correct time on there and if I put it over there now it's saying 0 0.7 cool um, and always remember to persist in dream if you want it to persist in the dream one last thing we need to do is add a controller sensor so that we can trigger moving out of this scene and into a different one so we'll add a controller sensor with remote controllable and we use the uh, touchpad button and use that to turn on a doorway and we have two of these one will be going out and one will be coming in avoid confusion so uh, for the going out one we want to power that when we push the touchpad and um, for the coming in we, we just leave it there it doesn't need to do anything uh, for testing purposes, I'm going to add a readout of where it, where the actual playhead is, like that. So that even if we don't have the music playing, we can still see if it's working. Uh, so now if we play uh, the scene and then I push the touchpad, it exits and I'll save and let it exit. Cool, so now, now let's add a dream and bring in that scene and so it's coming in and it's going into the entrance for that scene and then when we click the button it's going to go out into a copy of the same scene so we have the same setup and then if we press the touchpad out of there we'll just go back to the previous scene so push the touchpad and it'll go to there push the touchpad will go to there and we can kind of bounce back and forth easily enough we'll also go into the update mode and click on auto update so that we can more easily update the scene within the dream cool so now let's uh, test it so it's saying 0.5 because that's where we set the initial value so now if we click the touchpad it's carrying on from the same position so if we get it to 0 0.6 or 0 0.58 yes yeah, so it's carrying on from the same position 
Uh, so that, now let's just turn on the music and see how it sounds. Put that back to zero. And we'll go back out and update the dream so that it uses those, those uh, new settings. So to do that, go into here and edit. And it will automatically update because we've gone into edit mode. And now we can go back out and save it. Okay, we'll reset. And then Whoa! And then push the touchpad. So it was pretty well. I'd like to thank Kel Bjorns, the common people, Jack Power and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. If you'd like me to keep making these tutorials and helping creators across the internet, you can find out how to support me in the link in the description. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.